So my minnow students, time for another lesson on options for your menopause. I'm Menopause Taylor, helping you to tailor everything to manage your menopause your way. In the last few videos, I've given you tutorials on the vitamins, minerals, and dietary supplements that can alleviate various symptoms of menopause. And now it's time to do the same with herbs. Many of you prefer to use herbal remedies for one aspect or another of your menopause management. And what you need to know is which herbs help which symptoms of menopause. No single herb suffices for all the symptoms of menopause, and none of the herbs is capable of preventing any of the diseases associated with menopause. The other thing you need to know are the risks associated with various herbs. You've heard me say many times that nothing is without risk, and herbs are no different. If you want to use herbs, you have to know which herbs are for which symptoms and what their risks and side effects are. So that's what I'll cover today. Now, later in this series, I'll cover each symptom individually and every disease individually. And when I do that, I'll be giving you every option for managing each symptom, including the herbs. So for purposes of this video, instead of delivering the information symptom by symptom or disease by disease, I'll organize it herb by herb, or as they say in Australia, herb by herb. <laughs> so I'll present each herb and tell you which symptoms it will help. And I'll present them in alphabetical order, just for simplicity. And of course, at the end, I'll have a chart of it for you. Okay, so we're gonna start with the letter A. And for A, we have aloe vera. It helps with just one symptom of menopause, joint pain. Now you'll find it in many different forms. Right here I have a lotion, but you'll find gels, you'll find capsules, you'll find it in many different forms. So just remember, A is for arthritis and aloe vera. The second herb is black cohosh. Let's see here, I have a black cohosh tincture and I have a powder. Now, black cohosh is one of the most ancient, popular, and multi-purpose herbs. It helps with a lot of your menopausal symptoms, including hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, mood swings, irritability, and depression, unwanted hair growth, and vaginal dryness. That's more than is typical for an herb. But there are a few things that can get worse with black cohosh. It can make you gain weight and it can give you headaches or make your headaches worse. And some women have side effects like nausea, vomiting, or breast pain when they use black cohosh. But the biggest risk of using black cohosh is that it can lower your blood pressure and it can be sometimes significant. Remember, you don't get any literature on risks when you buy an herb. It's not a requirement of the industry. So don't assume that just because you don't have any literature about risks that there are no risks. Now for the letter C. The first herb that starts with C is California poppy. Here I have the actual herb. Here I have some capsules. California poppy is good for your moods. So mood swings, irritability, and depression. You can remember that by thinking of California hippies, who are happy all the time. Hi, but happy. <laughs> and next, we have cayenne. Now here I have cayenne in pepper form, I have a tincture, and I actually have an extract. Now cayenne helps with one thing, decreased sex drive. You see, that's typical of herbs. Most have only one benefit, so cayenne, can help boost your sex drive. Okay, now for Chai Hu Long Gu Muli Wang, complicated name. With a name like that, you'd think it would serve to improve a bunch of your symptoms. Not so. It's good for three things, insomnia, mood swings, and irritability. That's it. 
<laughs> and it's not that easy to find either. <laughs> chased berry is next. Now, chased berry, that's a very common one. If you were called tutorial 37, I taught you all about chased berry. Here I have the actual berries. They're just berries, a whole bag full of them. And I have some capsules and some tablets. Now, chaseberry is progesterone. This means that chaseberry is going to help with the symptoms that are related in some way to progesterone. So which symptoms are they? Well, the first one is your periods. You know that your menstrual cycles result from an interaction between estrogen and progesterone. I taught you that in video 9. And you know that perimenopause is due to low progesterone. I taught you that in videos 10, 74, 75, and 76. Do you see why I tell you to watch the videos in order? They build on one another. <laughs> and you also know that progesterone is the hormone of pregnancy. It's the baby's hormone. It's not there for you. Your hormone is estrogen. So chaste berry is going to do some of the same things that progesterone does. It will help with all the following. It will help regulate your periods. It will make you drowsy, so it might help alleviate insomnia. It will decrease your sex drive. It will possibly decrease headaches. It will decrease your risk of uterine cancer. It may cause depression, and it may cause vaginal dryness. You see, if you think about it, when you're pregnant, you can experience all of those things. You're usually drowsy. Your sex drive is lower. You might have fewer headaches. You might be a bit depressed, and your vagina might be dry. The word chasteberry comes from the fact that monks use it to curb their sex drives. It makes you chaste. <laughs> now, in contrast to chasteberry, we have Cubeb. I taught you about this in video 44 on testosterone. Cubeb is a mild form of testosterone. So it can help improve your sex drive. It's just the opposite of chaseberry. And another herb that's closely related to Cubeb is Damiana. Now, Damiana increases your sex drive also, and it's a little bit stronger than Cubeb. Damiana may also help alleviate hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, and fatigue. Why? Because it's testosterone. And testosterone loss, just like estrogen loss, causes some of these symptoms. Ask any man who has had anti-hormonal treatment for prostate cancer, and he'll tell you he's had those symptoms of menopause. The next herb is Dong Kwa. Dong Huai. Now this one is fairly popular, but it's only useful for one symptom of menopause. Vaginal dryness. And it has the side effect of thinning your blood. Another popular herb is evening primrose. And evening primrose can help with mood swings, irritability, depression, breast pain, and incontinence. Are you starting to see how you have to know which herbs are good for which symptoms? And none of these herbs is magic. Herbs will not erase your symptoms. They'll just decrease their severity. All right, so that brings us to fever few. Let's see, I have capsules the actual herb, and two different tinctures for Feverfew. Feverfew decreases pain. It helps reduce your joint pain and your headache pain. Next is Ginkgo Biloba. Here I have the actual leaves. I've got some capsules, and I have a tincture. Now, ginkgo, ginkgo is all about your brain. It's good for your brain in the short term and 
it in the long term. In the short term, it decreases your forgetfulness. It makes your brain less foggy. And, and, and it also helps reduce your risk for Alzheimer's disease. That's the long-term brain benefit. It's not going to do what estrogen can do for your brain, but it certainly benefits your brain. And then there's go-to cola, which is closely related to ginkgo. But go-to cola only benefits your brain in the short term. It helps reduce your forgetfulness. It does not help prevent Alzheimer's at all. So this is a very important distinction. Are you at all familiar with Hawthorne? Capsules, tincture. In my opinion, Hawthorne is one of the most important herbs. That's because it can help reduce your risk for a heart attack. That's its only benefit, but it's a big one. Why? Because heart attacks are the biggest killer of postmenopausal women. Heart attacks kill one out of every two women. If you're an earth mother and you haven't been watching my videos on all the other stuff, you're missing some of these huge concepts that really matter. So please, please, please don't get trapped into learning about only one option category. Learn about all of them and then you can still use whatever you want to manage your menopause. Now for hops. Here's hops, the actual herb. You learned in video 31 that hops contains estrogen. Of course, as with all herbal estrogens, the strength is very weak. But it can help with certain symptoms, specifically insomnia. And it may even reduce your risk for a heart attack a tiny bit. Again, not nearly as much as estrogen does. The risk of hops is that it contains estrogen. So if you shouldn't take estrogen, don't use hops. <laughs> Next is joyful change. It's good for helping to reduce hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, and vaginal dryness. It's a little harder to find than some of these other herbs though. What about kava kava? Have you ever heard of kava kava? Here I have kava kava in a tea and a powder, a chewable candy, and a tincture. It's got one benefit. It helps reduce insomnia, but not as much as valerian does, which we'll get to when we get to the V's. <laughs> So now the next one is licorice root. Now I have licorice root tea, tincture. I have the herb, a great big bag of the herb. And here is the actual root. It's like bark. Now licorice root comes in all these forms, but you know, it's unfortunately not a very popular herb, but it should be you need to get familiar with licorice root. Licorice root is one of the very few herbs that has some significant long-term benefits. Not only does it help reduce fatigue in the short term, but it also helps reduce your risk for breast cancer, uterine cancer, and ovarian cancer. Very few herbs can do any of that kind of stuff. But as with many herbs, there is a risk with licorice root. It causes high blood pressure. You see, nothing is without risk, not even herbs. I don't understand why some of these herbs are really popular, even though they don't do much. And then there's something like licorice root, which does a bunch of really important things, but most women haven't ever heard of it. And another thing that baffles me is that most herbs only help with symptoms of menopause. Here's one that actually can help prevent diseases. Yet, women focus more on the herbs for hot flashes. Aren't you glad you're watching this video? And aren't you glad that you're a student of Menopause Taylor University? <laughs> now for motherwort. Okay, this is motherwort. Now this one is kind of odd. Notice that it contains the word mother. 
Well, that's because it was traditionally given to new mothers to treat conditions related to childbirth. I don't really know how it flowed over into the menopause category, but you'll find women using it for menstrual irregularity as well as for nervousness, insomnia, and heart palpitations. Use for menopausal symptoms is kind of unfounded, but it has no known health hazards, and women do use it for those things. Now for passion flower. Here I have the actual herb, and I have some capsules. Passion flower helps with insomnia. That's it. Passion flower is for insomnia. Not nearly as well as val valerian, which we'll get to in a minute. And red clover is another herb that contains estrogen. Here I have the tea, and I have the actual blossoms, red clover. Now, like hops, you need to know that red clover is a very weak form of estrogen. Now, red clover is not very popular for menopause, which is odd given the fact that it actually does contain estrogen. See, most of these herbs don't really contain estrogen. Only a few of them do. But like most phytoestrogens, it's so weak that it has no specific benefits. You will see it as an ingredient in a lot of the combination herbal formulations that you can find for menopause everywhere. Okay, here's another popular one. This is St. John's wort. So I have the actual herb and it looks like this. I have some capsules, and I have powder. St. John's wort is the most popular herb for mood issues. Women use it for mood swings, irritability, and depression. So I have all these forms, it's very easy to find, and it's in widespread use. Unfortunately, most of the people who use it don't know that it thins their blood. And if you have surgery when you've been taking St. John's wort, you can bleed significantly. And the problem is that most patients fail to inform their doctors that they're taking it. So be sure you tell your doctor about all the herbs you can take. They are not without risks. We're all the way to the teas. And tea is for tea tree oil. And tea tree oil helps with one thing, acne. And you'll usually find it in a tincture like this. That way you can place it directly on the lesions. Okay, and here we are at valerian. Now, here I have valerian in capsules. And by far, valerian is the best known herb for treating insomnia. And it's very easy to find. It also helps a bit with your mood simply because, you know, if you sleep well, you're going to be in a better mood. <laughs> now, this is another herb that women use a lot without knowing the risks associated with it. It carries the risk of causing liver disease. So herbs are not harm harmless. And you will find valerian as a component in a lot of the combination formulations you see for menopause. Next, we have wild yam. Now, here I've got a powder, I've got a cream, and I've got the actual herb. You learned in video 37 that there's a big misconception about wild yam. Most people think it contains progesterone. It doesn't. It contains estrogen. But because this misconception is so widespread, you'll find it on the grocery store shelves with all the progesterone products. Don't be fooled. It's estrogen. And one misconception is that wild yam helps with a lot of your symptoms of menopause. It doesn't. <laughs> it helps with vaginal dryness. That's about it. <laughs> I have a problem with anything that isn't accurate. I want you to use whatever you want. But for heaven's sake, I want you to know the facts first. And most women don't get an education about these facts. They get marketing. And they assume that the marketing is factual. Marketing is not factual. It's a sales pitch. <laughs> so there's a difference between ed, ed, and ad, ad. <laughs> ed, ed is education. Ad, ad is advertising. Get the facts first. <laughs>
then you can use whatever you want to manage your menopause. <laughs> and there's one final herb. <laughs> you may not have even heard of this one. It's Wupian. And it has one benefit. It helps grow hair. And it is fairly hard to find. So, are you surprised about the benefits and risks of some of these herbs? Did you already know all this? If you're like most women, you learn some things. Most significantly, you learn that herbs are not harmless. Some of the most common herbs have the fewest benefits. <laughs> some of the least common herbs have the most or greatest benefits. Only a couple of herbs have any long-term benefits of preventing disease. If you're interested in using herbs to manage your menopause, you can use this information to get the herbs that will benefit you the most. And as I promised, I have made you a chart. You can print it out and use it at the herb shop, and you can find it in two locations. If you look just below this screen, you'll see a box with the description of this video, and you'll see a link to the chart. And if you go to my website, which is menopausetaylor.me, you'll find this chart and all the other charts I've made for you. On the website, what you do is go to the menu bar, hover over YouTube video tutorials, and a sub-menu will appear, and it'll say tutorial charts. And when you click on that, you'll see a list of all the tutorials that have charts, and you'll see all the actual charts for each. Okay, so here's the chart. Now, I know we're all too blind to see the chart on the screen. <laughs> the chart is just too big to fit on the screen. But on paper, it's much more legible. And you can refer to it when you're out and about. Along the left-hand side, you'll see all the herbs I presented. And across the top, you have the symptoms or diseases that each herb can improve. And if there's a plus sign in the column, it means that the herb can be beneficial for that symptom or disease. Okay, ladies, that's it for today. Come back next week when I'll teach you about some surprises in the supplement industry. And that the supplements will include vitamins, minerals, dietary supplements, and herbs, all of them. In the meantime, follow me, subscribe to my channel, and go to my website. I have so many different resources for you at my website, articles I've written, one-on-one -on -one consultation scheduling, seminar registration. I'm trying to provide absolutely everything you need to make your future menopausal life successful. These videos are great if you're very young and can take years to get all the information from the videos, but if you're already peri or postmenopausal, you need to take advantage of something that will give you the entire education much more quickly than you can get it in these videos. So I've created every resource to serve your needs regardless of your timeline, learning style, or budget. So check out your educational options just like you're checking out all your menopause management options. <laughs> it's all about doing what's right for you, both for purposes of learning and for succeeding at menopause. Okay, so I'll see you in a week. And in the meantime, I'll see you on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Bye.